Hey all good morning. You may have noticed I'm in a new place. My wife and I moved back to Los Angeles last month and that's part of why I haven't been uploading so much. It's been a lot of work moving. Um, we did it in a very short amount of time but I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the video but today I just want to share with you what a day in the life has been like for me here in Los Angeles still working as a software engineer at Twitter. It is currently 7.53 in the morning. This is a lot earlier than uh, I think I would normally wake up on some days, but um, being that I'm back on West Coast hours now, a lot of my meetings happen in the morning. So like my first meeting, my first meeting is at nine o'clock. Uh, and then I have a couple meetings after that, one of which may or may not get canceled. Uh, but I pretty much am in meetings for the morning until 12 o'clock, sometimes one or two. Uh, because a lot of people are on the East Coast around my team as well, so it's just easier to accommodate everyone that way. All meetings are pretty much in the morning. And I actually don't mind it. It's pretty nice. Um, but what that does mean is I've only got about an hour here uh, to have breakfast and get ready. little tip we got for bread so you can see I'm making some bread here to go with breakfast. Hold on a sec. Crap, these eggs are going to get overcooked. Uh. Oh. Okay. There. Anyhow, when we were in Hawaii, we went to a Daiso. I didn't even know they had a Daiso. That would totally make sense. A lot of Japanese tourists and stuff. So we got these little training chopsticks because Julia doesn't know how to use chopsticks and we just kept them they were like a dollar and they're really awesome actually for pulling bread out of the oven check it out you want me to hold the camera here no, i got it i can hold it it's possible <laughs> We uh, had breakfast and actually had like 10 minutes to watch a little YouTube before first meeting here. My first meeting that is about to start, it's my team sort of huddle meeting. So we're on agile sprint methodology, two week sprints. And you know, you have planning, you have retrospective, um, those kind of happen at the beginning and the ending of sprints. We also have this one that we call a huddle that is in the middle of the sprint that's just sort of to update everyone on how things are going, if there's anything you need help with, if there's any blockers, or if anything about the sprint's scope, that's like how much you're working on, has significantly changed. And I think usually also we get like a presentation, like a fun presentation, like a little five minute thing about what state our sprint is named after. I actually did mine a couple of weeks ago. It was on the state of California. And the one today, I believe, is on the state of Hawaii, so it should be fun. Good morning, everyone. Anyone doing anything fun for the weekend? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right, so that was probably my longest meeting of the day. No, actually, there might be a long one later, but basically, we just went over a lot of stuff. Um, everyone kind of update on what they're working on, if they have any planned time off coming up, which I actually do have some time co off coming up. Uh, my wife is gonna be taking her citizenship test next week, so I'm going with her. Very excited for her, fingers crossed, everything goes well. And then also, at the end, we have time to sort of have like an open-ended discussion about stuff. So there was some interesting stuff about um, some experiments that have been called recently that we wanted to talk about. We have some new members joining our team. We wanted to make sure that we could have them join in a way that made them feel like part of the team. And yeah, just kind of, you know, back of mind stuff that's nice to, to handle during this time. So now I've got a few minutes before my next meeting. This one's gonna be a little shorter. This is a project that I'm working on currently. This is sort of just our weekly update. So everyone comes in, says what they've been working on. We all kind of align on where we're at. And then we just move on with our day. In fact, there's a good chance this meeting's gonna get canceled, but we'll see. Uh, his headphones still aren't working. All 
Okay, so uh, my camera died during that meeting, uh, so I didn't get to record more of it, but it was a pretty standard meeting. We just did updates. There were some concerns around timelines and whatever, but everyone got in sync and we're all good. Uh, so yeah, that meeting's over, which is nice. So now uh, I canceled my 11 o'clock meeting. Not enough people were gonna show up. It was like a game time thing, which we did last week. It was really fun. So I've got one meeting left that's in an hour. I think this is also a pretty good time to talk a little bit about the differences between working at like a big fang tech company versus working at a startup. I worked for two startups. I worked for Thrivemark and I worked for Juniper Square. And those experiences are in a stark contrast to working at Twitter, which is where I work now and have worked for the last six months. The main differences between the two companies is that really the size dictates a lot of processes. So in a startup, you're small, it's very easy to communicate with people, it's very easy to go as like a regular engineer and even have a discussion with the CTO if necessary to get something moving along. Versus in a large company like mine, I believe I have, hang on, actually I can find out. There are four managers between me and the CEO of the company, Parag. And so like, here's, here's like an interesting pro con. There is no situation where I am going to need to interface with the CEO of the company in a large company like Twitter. There are so many levels between me who are are already overseeing so many thousands of people that they are going to be the ones who are communicating most often with him and to determine strategy and everything else. And that's, in a way that's good, it means that it's less for me to worry about in terms of guiding the entirety of the company. In other ways, it's bad because if I wanna have a lot of impact, it's very hard for me to set the course of the ship. At a startup, I was able to give feedback to our CEO or CTO that very likely could have actually ended up helping to guide the strategy of the ship. Now going hand in hand with that, there are some downsides. As the company is a lot easy, is a lot larger and more well organized, that means that the processes to get work done are also very organized and all the work you have to do basically has to fit into that mold. So if I want to create a new feature or if I want to uh, propose something, I'm very limited in what I can make because I'm an engineer. I don't have a lot of say in the actual features that we create or the direction of our product in general. We have an entire organization for that, the product organization. And that's fine. I actually like that. I like that their full-time job is just dreaming up of ways to make the product and the company better for our customers. And for me, it's about how can I make it work in a way that the end user experience when they're actually using the stuff that I'm making is most beneficial to them. It is definitely a collaborative process. But in general, my feedback doesn't always translate into features. And I have no doubt that lots of engineering created features or suggested features have absolutely become product features for our company at the end of the day. But I'd say that those are probably in the minority. Versus at a startup, you could have an idea for something that you think might add value to a customer and you might get a week or two to go work on a proof of concept and roll it out there just to see, even if product isn't necessarily actively working on it. In general, companies will want product to sort of still be guiding that vision, but when you're a really small company, they're willing to allow you to have more flexibility so long as you're willing to sort of do it on your time and not take away from the other initiatives that are going on. And that brings us to the next big difference, which is the work-life balance. Startups in general do not have as good work-life balance as big tech companies. Does that mean every startup is like this? No, absolutely not. When I worked at Juniper Square, the work-life balance was very good. And granted, they were already becoming a medium-sized company at that point, and they've hired even more since I left. But the work-life balance was very good. A lot of people were able to take vacation and not have to worry about being on call and things like that. We were always able to assign it off to other people. Versus when I worked at Thrive Market, the work-life balance could kind of change from week to week. There were definitely a couple times that I worked on weekends, which I'm not proud of, and I really wish I didn't have to do, but that was the expectation working in a startup that sometimes deadlines need to be met for the health of the company. I don't agree with that methodology at all, and that's part of why I'm very happy to work at a company like Twitter now, where because of our size and because of the, the resources that we have available to us in terms of just the sheer number of engineers and everything else, we're able to have sort of people on call and available all the time without people having to miss out on taking weekends. Sometimes maybe some people are going to work on a holiday because they're in another country that doesn't have that holiday. They're able to take another day off later in the week if they want to make up for it. It's not a problem because we are very flexible with paid time off. And because we don't have the same kind of go, go hustle mentality as a startup, we're able to take our time planning things, putting timelines out that make sense. And then 
we can sort of take our time getting there. There are a lot of people who like to comment saying that people who work at Twitter don't get any work done and that there's a lot of people who need to be fired, yada yada. I don't think that could be any farther from the truth. Um, obviously I can't speak too much into specifics, but I can say having worked here six months now, there are a lot of people working very hard at this company, but who still practice a good work-life balance, myself included. Something else that's really nice is that Twitter like really bought into full-time remote first, so like even though we've moved back to Los Angeles, I'm still working for my home most days. I do plan to go into the office pretty soon here, so if you want to see that video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video because it'll probably be coming in the next few weeks. I'm really excited for that. And also, uh, I'll be able to talk a little bit more about why we moved to Los Angeles in the coming weeks as well. It's not as simple as you might think, but I think that it's something that a lot of people will relate to. Hey, sorry about that. I was looking at a code review and lost track of time. Oh man, we've been having these meetings on Fridays to finish up this design document and they always go over, like... <sighs> there's a lot to cover, like it definitely feels like we need more time, but also just like, gosh, it's always lunchtime and it's always over, I'm so hungry right now. Alright, we're gonna go get some food, it's very late, so we're just gonna get something quick and easy and come back. So the week that I'm recording this, this is like the, the big heat wave of September here in Los Angeles, so it's been pretty hot. I'm actually getting kind of cooked over in my seat over there, so I moved over here to talk for a bit. We just got back from lunch, we went to Chick-fil-A and we got some boba after at Pearl's on Fairfax, super good. It's a weird day. There's some work that I could do, but I don't really need to do, and I've kind of already started looking ahead at some stuff for next week. A lot of people are signing off early because it's Labor Day weekend, I think I'm gonna do the same. So the last thing that I was gonna do before I signed off was I was gonna check and see if anyone got back to me. The cool thing about working in a big company like Twitter is that we have a really sophisticated component library. So when I create things from, like I guess some designs, I need to create something. More often than not, it's already been handled. There's a component I can drop in that will meet all of the design requirements necessary. Every so often there's something that exists on like iPhones and Androids that does not exist on web. And then there's like, we gotta figure out how to handle those use cases. In this case, I really just need to know whether or not to use one component or another. I think most of the team that works on that are actually in Europe. So they're already signed off for the weekend. I'm not gonna hear from till next week. So yeah, I'm pretty much at a good stopping point. It's almost four o'clock here. I'm gonna need to feed this guy soon. And to be honest, I'm just, I'm tired. So I wanna stop working for the day. That's what I'm gonna do. One last thing that I want to talk about. A lot of people commented in my last video, first of all, that I didn't do enough work. That was like a seven hour coding day. That is like way more work than I normally do in a single day, especially coding. And to be honest, it's not reflective of what I think a realistic engineer's day is like. So today I really didn't do any coding. I opened up the code base a few times to take a look for a few things, but this was a very meeting heavy day. That in itself can be pretty tasking in itself. So it, it took a lot out of me to be present for these meetings, to look things up in the code base. I don't think that there's anything wrong with having days where you're doing more meetings and coding and days we're doing more coding than meetings. That's just part of the job. I wanted to give you guys an example of sort of like what a day looks like that's not coding heavy where it's more meetings. And as you can see, it's just a lot of meetings and sometimes that's the job.
we just got back from a really amazing walk, as you saw from the footage. We've never been to that part of Brentwood before. Really just beautiful out there. Really nice to walk around. Would love to have a house there one day. You never know. We're gonna make some dinner here. We're gonna watch some house, and then we're probably gonna go to bed. So enjoy this montage of me heating up a Costco pizza. Mm -hmm.